Hello, I am KMA, and I have had a difficult life um, when I was a child and stuff, and for 30 years I've been learning how to make my life better, to become happier, and be a better person through trials and tribulation that life gives you. I am making this particular episode because this is the number one way to create happiness in your life. And the reason why I want to create happiness in your life is my main goal in life is to help others around me. So if you can't, if you don't have to go through what I went through, that makes me happy. If I can help you out, that makes me happy. So I am making this particular episode because it is the number one way to create happiness in your life. And to create that happiness is one word. Gratitude. Welcome to the Be Better Podcast, where we talk about becoming better people every day of our lives. Improve your habits for you so you can enjoy life more than you could imagine. Today we are taking on gratitude. This episode is for those who struggle with happiness, the people that have forgotten what strong, loving feelings feel like. If you are into bettering your life, this will definitely help you out. I'm going to ask you to do a little experiment, and if this is done properly, you will be guaranteed smiles, most likely a laugh, and even a cry from happiness. It is an amazing way to break down the barriers that we build around ourselves to protect us from outside harm. And I do a lot of research because most of my work in the inside of my head, uh, I do a lot of research on. And I try different things out and see what helps out and what doesn't. And I ran into this old Soul Pancake, which is a YouTube channel. Soul Pancake is the name of the channel. And they uh, did this experiment. And the amount of emotions I saw on the people who didn't know what they were getting themselves into, then very grateful that they got themselves into the situation. Um, and it helped break down a whole bunch of barriers that you put up to protect yourself so you don't feel pain. And by the way, this is the second time I've recorded this. Um, I think everything happens for a reason. And I recorded this last week for the intention of putting this out last Monday. But for some reason, as I was editing it, I was cleaning up my computer. <laughs> Mid-edit, you know, you go do something else and you come back. I'll edit this in an hour or so. And you go do something and you come back and uh, you're like, oh, I got to, you know, clean up some space on my computer. And I, by accident, I deliver, deleted the file completely. And... Um, I totally believe that everything happens for a reason, and there is a reason why last week's clips or the audio and video didn't come out for this podcast, and that reason I do not know, and I may never know, but I do believe that reason was for a good thing. Uh, maybe I can help more people out this week than I could last week with this information. I don't know. I just kind of let the river of life take me where I, it takes me and I try and just not give too much turbulence to this river to get to where I want I kind of like let it I have faith I'll just lay on my back and glide on the water and let it take me to where it needs to take me and I know that it is probably the place I need to be like I said, let's get into this soul pancake experiment. And if you do watch a lot of YouTube on TV, on <laughs> TV, on your computer, TV, phone, wherever, um, you may have seen this video, especially if you um, do research in the mental health field. And to do this experiment, you need some paper and a pen. This is action one, by the way. Each, each one of these podcasts has three actions, by the way. And this is action one. To do this experiment, you need a pen and paper. Yes, I'm putting you guys to work. <laughs> so get that pen and paper now. Now, get the pen and paper and, or at least a notepad on the computer. So pen and paper, notepad, however you feel comfortable. 
Something to write things down on. Yes, we're getting to that. You should pause this and get something, or you could do this later, but it would be better if you would do this experiment before you know what the outcome is all about. Yes, so that right there makes it makes it seem sneaky like I'm gonna try and get you to do something that you didn't want to do right <laughs> we'll see hang around we'll see now I want you to close your eyes and think of people that you that have helped you throughout your life people you love very much and choose one that stands out from all the others the person you probably love more than anyone else in the world a teacher a parent a child a grandmother who means more than anyone in the world to you? Hold this person in your mind and think of all the reasons why you love them so much. How they have helped you and why you have chosen this person as your biggest influence or and or guide in your life. This doesn't mean this person has to be your wife or your husband or your mom or dad. Just somebody that has made you the best person that you could possibly be. I shouldn't say made you because you are the one that makes yourself that, but the one that has helped you become the person that you are, the things that you like about yourself. Um, when I go back through my life and I think of people that um, I love very much, I realized how closed off I closed myself to the rest of the world. Um, I was molested by a trusted person, not a family member, thankfully. And um, the reaction from my family to the molestations were almost as bad as the molestations themselves. They were saying I was making it up, this is BS, and ultimately my mom told me years and years later that she thought that if she admitted the fact that I was molested as a child, that she was a bad parent and she didn't want to admit to being a bad parent, but saying that the alleged molestation or, you know, trying to brush it underneath the rug and doing what she did to, or my, my parents did to not blame themselves for being bad parents, made them bad parents because it made my life that much more difficult because they gave the impression they didn't trust me in what I was saying, that it didn't matter what this guy did to me for seven years and all this. And um, because at a young age, under 10 years old, I was deceived by the people that we look up to the most and whatever, your parents, um, I felt um betrayed totally betrayed by them and i lost trust in the people that i loved so this has come with me for three decades and when i try and find somebody that has meaned more than anything else in my life that i have felt loved by i have a hard time choosing because I put up this barrier to protect myself from emotions from other people because I felt so betrayed from my parents when I was a kid about believing me with this stuff. Actually, they, I never, I didn't actually bring it up to them until later, but that solidified my, um, my distrust, my inability to um, rely on other people for help with stuff because I get things in my head, I get things done better and faster by myself, but that's all wrong because ultimately a group can get things done better and faster than just myself. And you know, so you know, it's things like this that I'm working through right now as I'm recording that makes me think why um, this podcast is going to help me out as hopefully as it will help you out too. So hold this person in your mind and uh, believe it or not, even after that little sidekick there, I have chosen my mom. <laughs> 
even though now 30 years after the abuse it's still quotation mark alleged on un unquotation mark um, abuse from this person because it still is hard on her to understand the pain I went through and she would feels like she would blame herself for it but she has also done a lot of amazing things for me in my life too well, it's a tough one so hold this person in your mind and think of all the reasons why you love them so much how they have helped you and why they have chosen why you have chosen this person as your biggest influence and a guide in your life so now that you have this pen and paper in your hand write down a paragraph this is action two of the reasons you chose this person why is it that you chose this person as a person that has mean more than anybody else in your life write it down as if you're telling them right now don't hold back explain all the reasons you have chosen them and what they have meant in your life if you want you can pause this until you are done I would say pauses write it down Write down a, a few sentences, you know, at least four or five sentences of why this person has helped you out. You can do a lot more than four or five sentences also. If they have done amazingly uh, great work with you or um, relations with you and have helped you felt, feel loved and um, respected and all that. So like I say, um, I think I would choose my mother, even though she's the one of the biggest issues I've had in my life is her is her inability to accept the fact that I was molested. <clears throat> but she has also, at a very young age, at a very young age for me, noticed something was a little off with me. That I was a little more depressed. That I was a little more emotional I guess than a eight-year-old would be should be you know I was advanced there and she really helped me um, show me tapes that I listened they bought she bought me some tapes I could listen to some self-help tapes I'm talking uh, in the 70s this stuff didn't really exist and in the early 80s there was um I think the guy's name was Bill Moyers and stinking thinking and being aware of your thoughts and being able to uh, analyze your thought patterns and recognize when you have stinking thinking. She also brought me down the path of um, music. She, Everybody in my family was a musician, but she was the one that helped me become the better musician than... I would have been. Um, she is the person that helped me really understand music and how music can create um, different types of feelings and how important it is to know life better if you know music. And that changed my life. Most of my most of my life to escape the feelings of unwantedness that I had, helplessness or hopelessness. Um, I would lose myself in playing music, not put on a record. Yes, this is the 70s. There's records and tapes. And um, <laughs> I listened to those, but to plug in my guitar or play on the piano, I would lose myself in the improvisations and I would be totally gone. There would be no past. There would be no future. It would be just now. It was almost like somebody was playing me. And it was like I could just... I can just put my life on pause and uh, recuperate my energy and I would be playing some improv on the piano at the same time it wasn't it was it's like I'm not even there it's like something takes control of my body and I'm just able to go and that happened uh, sort of with the guitar too um, but not as much and without my mom I would never have been able to find these outlets to express myself creatively and emotionally and uh, and in my case, weirdnessly, I, uh, I have grown to really like the obscure, strange music that nobody really listens to because they go, is that music? Yeah, I, I tend to go to the extremes with my music listening, but, um, I do enjoy 
like even the pop music that you hear, Disney music and all that, I enjoy everything. But when I li- when I tend to listen to music on my own, and somebody else hears it, they're going, "What is that?" <laughs> but that's what I like, you know. And that's me. I mean, I could I could like what's big on the radio too, but I'd rather pause this podcast, pick up the phone right now and call them and read them what you just wrote. That is right. Call them. And if they aren't there, read them what you just wrote on their answer machine. If they are there, tell them, read them what you just wrote. Tell this person that you love more than anybody else in the world why you love them more than anyone else in the world. So the response for this is that usually when we're going through life, we don't we get stuck in life mode where we're just, you know, we got to do the errands. We got to clean up a little bit. We got to go to work. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got meetings to go to and people to meet. And it's just kind of like you go through life and you just tend to forget what these people mean to you. And can you imagine receiving a phone call from someone that, that you love very much and they just read you something like this? Um, why they love you, why they think you were one of the best people in the world, and all this amazing stuff. That, getting told that from somebody, your family or one of your good friends, would be, would be an amazing thing. Hold on. My cats were playing out there and making a lot of noise, so I had to go and get them outside. Uh, We have a screened-in porch, and my cats like to hang out on the porch and take in the sun, the hot Florida sun. So I put them outside on the porch, and now they are enjoying themselves, looking at birds flying around their trees outside, and probably going to be asleep in about 10 minutes in, in the chair in the sun. That right there is life at its best. But anyways... Can you imagine receiving a phone call like that from a daughter or a son or your uncle or your best friend? Doing that will not only make their day brighter, it will probably make their month and week brighter. They will never forget it. You will never forget it. And most likely, the emotions that are going to be felt are going to be amazing. Um, Some of the strongest emotions you've probably felt in a very long time. When you are going through life, you tend to fear things because they're unsafe. They're um, they're scary because they take a lot of guts to do. And this is one of those processes. What happens when you break through your when you break through your fear and do something? The rewards from it are ten times better than if you were just to do something and not break through your fear so breaking through your fear is if you fear something that means just go do it because in the, you know unless it's something stupid if it's there to make your life better and it, and you're afraid of it you, that's what you have to do next that's how some people live their lives um, I wish I could but my fear is so strong that sometimes I'm just way too afraid to do things but usually if I've come across something I fear, it's something I need to do. Also, I've, I've realized if there's something I don't like about somebody or, or a, a, a type of music or a type of writing, it's not so much that I don't like it as, as much as when I go read it, even going through my dislike of it, and I get to know about it, then I start liking it. Those are the things I tend to like a lot more, the ones that challenge me a little bit more, the ones I have to do a little bit of work for to gain the likeness. Um, Some of my favorite music of all time was music that took me 30, 40 times to listen to it before I would even consider liking it, and now that I know it and I've got it mastered I'm like oh my god this stuff is amazing but it took me years to actually like it and usually um, the harder you work at something the more you're gonna like it because the work that you need to do 
to get it. So work hard to get it and break through your fears, guys. Get it. Uh, this is all life is a, is like school, man. This that's what I think of. That's one thing my mom, my person, that I did this experiment for, is my mom. Um, life life is hard, but it's how you control yourself and get through life. You just gotta learn, man. It's school. It's what, like I said, when I was a kid, my mom said, life is school. You're here to learn. And she believed that if you went through your whole life and you didn't learn what you were supposed to learn, you would be reincarnated and told to learn from, learn again um, until you got it. And that's kind of, and each time you get closer to getting it, the more rewarding life becomes. It is definitely a struggle. Uh, you limit yourself with your own dreams and process thought processes. It's all about it's all about learning how to like what is around you. And sometimes that takes work. And sometimes it says, "Well, I don't want to do this anymore." I realized I don't actually like doing this. So let's change what I'm doing. So I want you to, the people who actually went through this experience, who actually followed my directions and wrote down a paragraph about their favorite person in their life and gave them a call, I want you to leave me a comment and description of wherever you're... Um, listening to this podcast now and let me know what you thought of the experiment if it helped you out or not I've learned if you have shown gratitude for what other people do around you that they will show gratitude that you are in their lives and getting gratitude and giving gratitude is the fastest way to become happy so if you're able to give gratitude to a friend, receive gratitude, it instant happiness. So that is why I made this episode, Gratitude, because I've come to realize in my life that with all the negativity and stuff that has happened, once I start becoming grateful for the things that are around me and even the actions that have happened to me, the happier I become and it's the fastest way to go from what I think from being in the press state to being happy is gratitude so if you practice gratitude and you are depressed right now give it a little time you will not be as depressed as you are now so as I believe so try it out to worst that can happen well I'm still depressed it has been scientifically proven that gratitude is the best way to make yourself or someone else happy isn't that one of the reasons to be living a life to smile to be happy so why not practice the thing that makes someone or yourself more happy than anything else so why is gratitude important? Gratitude is important because it's the fastest way to gain happiness in your life. Basically, it, that's what it is. It's the fastest way to become happy. So if you are unhappy, show some gratitude. You will receive happiness from the actions you did, the reaction of them smiling back at you because you did the gracious thing to them and they, they reacted positively and that makes you you can see instantaneously that you made a difference in somebody else's life, which gives you the feeling of importance that, and love that you want in your own life. <clears throat> Why remember gratitude? It makes yourself and the person giving and or receiving it happier. Who remembers gratitude? Everyone should be able to practice this, but sometimes you got to lead by example. The more it is seen done, the more often it will be done for you. 
how to remember gratitude. At least once a day while you are waiting in line or sitting in traffic, just having some time for your mind to wander around, think about what you are grateful for. And if you are able to, say it out loud so you can hear it. If you want to be awesome, tell someone why you are grateful they are in your life right now. So yeah, anytime you have, you know, there's, every day has slow, slow points, whether or not it's driving to work or going to the store or whatever. Um, you can think about reasons why you're grateful for certain situations that you are going through. And if you're able to, you know, tell people every day why you're grateful for their existence, why you're happy that their cubicle is next to yours instead of, you know, somebody else or whatever. It can, it can be something as simple as that. That, by the way, is going to do it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, I would like you to help me out. Could you share this episode on social media? Leave an iTunes review if you are listening through to this with Apple. Ask any questions if you have anything, or let me know what subjects you want me to cover. If you want to hear more, subscribe to my podcast. Follow me on Twitter at KMA's Corner. On Instagram, I make funny pictures every once in a while uh, at KMA's Corner. I make YouTube videos. As a matter of fact, I um, put the podcast out on audio on Monday and YouTube on Tuesday. So if you follow me on YouTube, you can see this podcast and you can also see some games I play. And I also make reviews of bands I like, uh, CDs. And I'm going through the band Yes, um, you know, owner of Lonely Heart. I'm going through their CDs right now um, and reviewing those. So you can see those if you're interested. I stream on Twitch, KMA's Corner. (laughs) I uh, play games on Twitch. I will be doing more mental health things on Twitch. So keep an eye out for that. So just go follow me on Twitch, KMA's Corner. And uh, soon I will have streams uh, based around mental health. But right now I'm just doing Let's Plays and just making people smile from the goofiness that I do in the games. In the games? <laughs> um, so, like I say, if you have any suggestions, if you uh, want me to start talking to somebody in the future, I plan on doing maybe 10 episodes just with me then start um, interviewing people, talking about and making this more of a discussion series instead of a school series. Right now it's kind of a school series, things you can do to make yourself happier and stuff. But uh, in the future, I'm going to be doing the discussion side of things um, with interviewing people or you know, you know, having other people on here that are in the mental health field also. And one last thing before I go, I belong to something on Twitter called the Mental Health Angels. Uh, I'm a mental health angel advocate, and it's a group of people who, if you're going through a tough time, you can DM them and they will talk to you and help you through the time. Uh, It's not a replacement for therapy, but if you're going through a really tough time at the moment and you need to talk to somebody right away, they are there to blend your to talk to you to help you through the situation you're going through so follow mh angels on twitter um, or message me if you need to talk to somebody and i will hook you up with somebody to talk with don't be afraid talking getting your emotions out verbally is a great way to actually see what you're feeling because when we feel it sometimes we don't think that we are feeling it talking about it really gets it out there And I will say, you are not alone. You are very much loved. And life can be tough, but you are not alone and you are loved. Never forget that. All right, guys. I will see you next week. Thank you for watching this podcast. I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's fun to make. Um... And just share it. I'm only I'm getting minimal views right now, and I would like for this to be shared because I think this will help out a lot of people. I could be wrong, 
but I think this is helpful. But until next week, have a great day. Thank you. Love you.